I am quitting my smartphone for a week. Now, I am not saying that smartphones or technology is evil, dangerous, or that it should be avoided. I really value all the modern inventions and conveniences that we have access to, like our smartphones. However, I do think that I have started to develop a slightly unhealthy relationship with my phone. I am also simply very curious what it's like to live without it in 2020. I am going to be removing my smartphone from my life, not my phone. And what I'm going to be using instead is this. I'm hoping that thanks to these insights that I will gather throughout this week, I will be able to design a new relationship, a healthier relationship with my smartphone. The plan is to first of all charge it up and see if it works and then try and fit an old SIM card into it. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, fine. While we're waiting for my new phone to charge up, let's talk about the benefits that I'm hoping to see through this experiment and also about my fears. The main benefit I'm expecting to see is feeling less anxious and more relaxed and more focused. I really notice how destructive, distracting, destructive my phone is. Every time I have my phone around me, I feel like I'm constantly expecting to receive something. And when I receive a notification or a message, I automatically reach to check it. One habit I'm really hoping to break is the constant tapping of the screen of my smartphone. It's so annoying that I keep doing that to the point that I sometimes there is not even a phone laying around and I still tap it because I have this habit of tapping to check for notifications on my phone. The worries that I have is the fact that I like to use my phone for directions. As long as I stay locally, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But if I was to drive somewhere outside my town or go back to London, for example, then I would definitely want to use an application on my phone. Another thing that I'm worried about is that I'm gonna be like, less connected with my friends and family because it's very easy and potentially cheaper to use applications like WhatsApp because I can call my parents in Poland and I don't have to pay anything for it. Mm, are there any other worries? I guess I use my phone when I travel or when I go to a new place and I want to find a good coffee shop, for example. What else? Banking. Actually, that's one big one. Oh, I won't be able to listen to podcasts. This is it, but otherwise I feel ready to do this. First walk without my phone. First proper day without my phone. There are some benefits and some cons. The benefit is that I'm feeling definitely lighter, physically and mentally. The con is the fact that, for example, I can't listen to music and I can't listen to podcasts. It is a downside, but it's not crazy bad. I can definitely get used to this. And I also feel that there is a benefit in just walking and doing nothing, because still, if you walk and do something on top of it, Essentially, you are trying to multitask, right? And this is definitely what I was trying to do. And I am not a fan of multitasking. I believe that there is a lot of good in doing one thing at a time. Okay, so I am starting to experience these little inconveniences of not being able to use your smartphone. I'm just booking accommodation and I need to fill out a form. I don't know why. Either way, I need to fill out this form that I've needed to print off and sign and then send it back to them. So normally I would use my phone for that. I would just take a photo and email it from my phone. But what I'm gonna have to be doing now is probably to use the camera that I'm recording on to take a photo, then transfer the photo using a cable from the camera to my laptop and email it back that way. However, I am working now and I'm finding that I'm not distracted by my phone by wanting to look at it, by wanting to check the emails, by wanting to check messages. 
that destruction is just not there and I really don't miss it. Let's go to town without my phone. Cześć Grzegorz. Idea posiadania takiego telefonu jest spoko, ale wykonanie powiem Ci, że na razie jest dość trudno. It starts as raining. I've gone to town and a few things happened. First of all, I forgot to set time on my old Nokia, which meant that I didn't know what time it was. And for the first time in years, I've actually had to ask someone. Another thing was that I realized that I always pay with my phone, almost always. I rarely have my wallet on me. And luckily this time I did take my wallet. So I think subconsciously it had clicked that I would need my wallet. I am shocked how many different things I use my phone for. I just wanted to flip out my phone and take a video and send it to my brother and I reached out for my phone and I realized oh shit I can't do that not being able to take photos and videos and share them instantly is proving to be one of the biggest disadvantages of not using my smartphone so far I'm making a coffee normally it would be on my phone but since I don't have my smartphone I'm just waiting doing nothing. I don't know if it's nice. It probably is nice, but I'm not fully appreciating it yet. Tomorrow I'm meeting up with my friend and I'm gonna have to drive to the place. I've never been there, so that means that I'm going to have to use directions of some sort. Normally I would be using my phone for this purpose, but since I am not using my smartphone, I am gonna have to work out a way forward. This is the challenge that I have feared the most, to be fair. This is genuinely getting hard. I've tried to find a location to meet up with my friend and I couldn't find a specific address of the car park that I want to go to. And I've had to take a screenshot of the Google Maps and email it to him because there was no other way that I could send him the address or show him the specific location that we can meet at tomorrow. It would have been so much easier to do that with WhatsApp. And I am also really not confident going there without any sat nav. So unless I find an alternative solution fast, I'm gonna have to use my smartphone, I'm afraid. Which is a shame because I've only just started this experiment, but okay. I've checked the route and I could just memorize it, but it would be such a, so much easier to not have to memorize the route and have the sat nav there in case I make a mistake and not stress the entire time that I drive. So essentially this will mean that I failed to not use my smartphone for a week, but I still want to not use it for the rest of the week and see what else I can learn from this. Going to a coffee shop that's kind of expensive. This is yet another benefit of using your smartphone. So it's end of day two. My main conclusion so far is that this experiment is actually more difficult than I anticipated. I'm really glad that I use my phone for directions and I am starting to see my phone in a completely new light and I am starting to fully appreciate all the benefits that it gives me and how much easier my life is when I can use my smartphone. Not to underplay the disadvantages and the addictive qualities of having a smartphone, but I think it's really healthy to realize that smartphones really make our life easier. 
I was planning to continue not using my phone for the rest of the week, even though I essentially failed already on day two because I used my phone for directions, but I didn't, which just confirms that I totally failed at quitting my phone for an entire week. Still, I feel like I have some valuable conclusions Here's the summary of this experience and what I have learned. I thought it would be easier to live without my smartphone and I felt actually pretty confident that I would succeed in this challenge. But although I failed, I think that the experiment in itself was a success. Not having my smartphone made me realize just how many things I use my phone for. Banking, paying, directions, restaurant recommendations, alarm clock, clock, calculator, torch, general googling. I also started getting a better understanding of which of these things are essential and I started appreciating them more. Take Satna for example. Isn't it amazing that you can know exactly how to get somewhere and how to avoid traffic and essentially have an as stress-free driving experience as possible and you don't even have to buy a separate device for that. Equally I also understood that I don't need on the go directions when, for example, I, I walk to a new place. Then I am happy to get lost and practice my orientation skills. On the other hand, not using my phone, at least for a couple of days, helped me identify things that I can live without, like my social media on my phone. I don't want to be connected to social media all the time and not having access to it throughout most of the day made me feel less anxious and a lot more relaxed which is not something uncommon because many people who quit or reduce their use of social media experience similar feelings. So having this new understanding makes me look at my smartphone from a fresh perspective. I think that deep down before this experiment, I used to see my smartphone as something a little dangerous that started to control my life and my feelings around it were primarily negative. I'm still very much cautious around my phone and how I use it and how it impacts my life, but equally I truly appreciate the benefits of it and I have new ideas for designing a healthier relationship with it. For example, I've done a great app purge on my phone and I neatly organized the remaining apps into folders so that my screen looks cleaner and less chaotic. Believe me, even something like this makes a big difference. I also removed all the social media from my phone and I only check my social media on my laptop. I'm planning to buy an alarm clock so that I don't have to keep my phone in my bedroom at night, which will also help me set cutoff times for using my phone so I can get a break from it. In general, this short experiment made me think about how I use my phone and no doubt, I'll keep experimenting with my relationship with it. If you're also not not totally happy with your current relationship with your phone, I would recommend that you do this experiment too. Quit your phone for a day and see when you really can't do without your phone and which things you're willing to let go of. I bet that like me, you won't see your phone the same way again. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, share it with someone who might need it. And if you'd like to subscribe, it would be awesome to have you in the tribe. Thanks for joining me today and I will catch up with you in my next one. Bye.